Well, this isn't exactly ideal. We're just trying to disconnect the flexi hose for the rear caliper here. <laughs> and I've got at least a bit of the steel pipe in the bracket still. So it's obviously just actually just twisted the pipe off and sheared. And it's because the steel pipe is actually plastic coated, I guess, to protect them from the environment. And that environment just kind of whittled its way in between the plastic and the steel and rots it away nicely. So that now needs to be fixed as well. So I'm just going to try and disconnect the handbrake cable without breaking that. Okay. Just going to try and compress this handbrake cable so I can get the ferrule from the end of the cable over the top of the caliper like so. And then I can remove the clip like that. And hopefully a little bit of jiggery. <laughs> it may or may not want to come out. The nice thing is once we've finished under here, everything is going to be much, much easier to work on because everything will have been replaced. There we go. Right, so, well, this is our seized caliper. Let's hope Neil's got an answer. Right, so this is our seized caliper and that one is looking lovely and shiny and also this is a little bit of your steel pipe as well. You've broken my car I again. Indeed, yep. Well, don't worry, <laughs> your little fuzzy head, I, I've got a plan. Good. <laughs> okay, well that's looking really nice though, so that's going to make a bit of a difference, isn't it? Yeah, this is the John Cooper Works brake caliper, so the distance from here to here is larger, moving right. the caliper further away from the centre of rotation. Hang on, so we just put that down here like so, so... You can it's see that it's actually, yeah, there's a couple of, probably about five mil, maybe even 10 mil, actually, I guess, sort of further away. So then that means you've got bit, sort of a bit more grip or torque, effectively, to slow the thing down. Yeah, so we've got bigger discs now. Yeah. Um, because you're further away from the centre, yeah. which gives you more torque, as you say. Well, that's cool. So, OK, so you're going to have slightly better braking on the back, but then how's that going to affect the handling of the car? Because obviously, if you've got more braking on the back, Presumably that's going to kind of match what you've now done on the front as well. Yeah, I've already upgraded the brakes on the front, mm. so uh, more braking on the back would be great. But also the ABS system does more than just ABS, it cool. alters the brake balance. And so things. it's not going to like, lock up on every corner you come up to? No, no, it shouldn't <laughs> okay. do, no. And back no. brakes really help even on a front wheel drive yeah. car. They make the, the braking much flatter than, uh, than if you've just got all the, the power going oh, to the front. The front. So. Yeah, that's great. OK, cool. So it's definitely going to make a big difference. And also it's going to look lovely, which is fantastic as well. Notice you've got a braided pipe here. So yes. that's going to look also look smarter, but it's also a bit more robust as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's not just robust, but also the rubber pipe, when you put your foot on the brake pe pedal, actually mm. expands slightly. So yeah. that's why you've got a softer brake feel. Yeah. With the braided hose, it doesn't do that. So you've got a really hard pedal and it's really direct. It's, when you brake in a rally car, you want to know you're braking. You're going to brake it, so, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that suggests then potentially that's going to help solve that problem then, is it? Yeah, one of the other things that you do with a rally car is move the brake lines inside. Right. And at the moment, the steel lines run on the bottom of the car of do, for, yeah. you know, to get them out of the passenger compartment. Yeah. compartment. So, I've got a little kit here yeah, cool. to make up new brake lines that we awesome. can run inside the car and get out of trouble and also replace that that's a good rustiness. idea oh nice no that's good we, we've far too many shiny things underneath that car now <laughs> brilliant all right well let's crack on with that then smashing yeah given that uh, you broke my brake car line do you want to make up the new one fair enough in that case you can carry on fitting the suspension on the other side no problem <laughs> okay now braided hose is actually quite a nice little option particularly on a performance car like the Mini, that can be a little bit more expensive than things like perhaps Cunifer or Copper Nickel pipe, and certainly it lasts a lot longer than steel. But it might actually save you some time because you don't have to worry about trying to get all those bends in the right place. Obviously, you can just thread it through the car as you go. But there are a couple of things you have to get right, otherwise this stuff doesn't really work quite so well. Now, the first thing you can see actually what it is, it's a stainless steel braid on the outside of a PTFE or polytetrafluoroethylene tubing on the inside. Now that stuff is obviously impervious to brake fluid and as Neil was suggesting earlier of course because of the strength of both the plastic and the stainless steel it doesn't actually bold or expand under braking which is a wonderful thing as well because of course you want that hard pedal but of course it's quite hard wearing as well and just looks fantastic as well. It looks very racy so it's all looking the part. Now when it comes to the fittings we're going to be using we've got some straight ones got some right angles there'll be some bulkhead fittings as well so obviously it's quite easy then to kind of route it through the car and make a really nice tidy job now each of these fittings is actually made up of three parts if I just take this apart very gently 
So I'll just pull that apart and you can see that's obviously a bulkhead fitting so it's threaded on one side and it's got a little tiny little tube and that's going to go on the inside of our PTFE tubing there. Now if you see that little tiny sort of tape of little chamfer at the bottom there that actually helps splay out the PTFE tubing to make sure that you get a really really good seal when it all clamps together. Now inside the other end is a little collet and that little collet is designed to push in between the PTFE and the stainless steel braid. But before we go anywhere, of course, just like when you're wiring a plug, you want to make sure you can actually get the back end on to the back here. And obviously I can't right now because if you look closely, you can actually see that the braid has been a bit squished, but also the braiding itself is all kind of splayed out a little bit as well. So what I need to do before I do anything else is a nice clean cut. Now the tricky thing about stainless steel braid is because of the way it's woven together it has a bias just like any fabric so when you cut one end you end up with this end that's splayed look at the other end you end up with an end that's kind of necked so it's as if those little wire ends just go all down and try and touch the tube so it actually makes it slightly harder to put on the collet on one end but it also makes putting the connector parts over there quite difficult now depends on how you cut it depends on how kind of result you get so you can see that this one is actually cut with a dremel this one is cut with a special shop machine with a very sharp blade and on the other end you can see that actually that again you know this is a bit more flaring on perhaps the dremel version than on the cutting blade so it's obviously nice sometimes to get it done in a company with the right equipment but then just to kind of really really give an example there's a much bigger hose you can see there's a lot more flaring at that end but also there's a lot more necking pretty much more exaggerated on the other end so I've got a cunning plan I'm going to try just to try and remove or at least reduce this down to an absolute minimum so the idea is I'm just going to get a little bit of tape pop that over the end there like so And then I'm going to pop on a cable tie. And the idea here is just to try and clamp down the ends of the stainless. So just going to go reasonably close to the edge. Pop that in a vise, so I'm actually holding it quite well, saves me things wobbling around. And then try and get that cable tie quite close to the jaws of the vise. Right, so now when we then cut this, hopefully, with any luck, the cable tie is going to be clamping both sides of the stainless braid. And once I've cut through, then it's going to obviously hopefully minimise the amount of splaying that's going to go on. And of course, if it's necking, it's the necking end. It's not such a problem anyway, but this way, at least it's going to be consistent, hopefully. So here goes nothing. Pull that off so then you can see that on the end there, is that right there, you can see that actually the splaying has been minimized. I can pop my little end over there quite easily, so that's good. So now we're ready for the next stage. First of all, I'll just tap out all the dust that might have collected. So now I just use the special tool just to actually work the braiding away from the PTFE pipe and then. Put the collet on, which sits just over the edge of the plastic. It pops in like so. You need to make sure that it goes all the way down. And the idea is to get the collet so that the pipe is butted up right against that kind of counter ball in there. So it just sits snugly on the end. And now you can see that all those little ends of the braid are sort of surrounding that chamfer from the collet and what's going to happen is when we kind of clamp everything together that's actually going to be part of the strength that's actually holding sort of the ends on either side of the pipe into position which is quite important so now we get our little end there and you can see again there's a little chamfer on the inside of there that's actually going to work up against the collet as well that's going to help sort of keep everything nice and secure make a nice seal there we are right just get the nut on the back there now depending on what material 
your connector is made from. If it's mild steel that's been plated, you should just lubricate it perhaps with a little bit of oil would be enough. But when it comes to stainless like these parts here, then you really want to make sure that they don't bind up because stainless on stainless really can kind of grab quite easily. So the thing to use is just use a little bit of PTFE grease and just pop that on there, just on the threads and just work it round just to make sure because that way it will stop anything untoward from happening and I'm just going to pop it in the vise just to save one hand. You'll start to feel it get a little bit tighter and basically you've got to leave a full turn between this nut and the rear. Well there we go, so we now have a really nice secure connector on one end, now I need to do the other end but before I do that I must remember another little tip that Neil has here is just going to have a little sticker I'm just going to place on the pipe so he knows which bit is where in the car and also just to protect that he's going to have a little bit of heat shrink is going to go over there so obviously I need to thread those on first but my other end is still a bit flared so I'm just going to do the same thing again I'm just going to make a nice tidy end there first thread everything into position including the other end of the connector and then we're pretty good to go it's also really good not to get these <laughs> little bits of stainless jammed into your fingers because they really do hurt So now, nice tidy cut there, so while it's still not splayed, I'll put on my two bits of heat shrink. One for each end. And also the rear of the fitting. Nice and tidy. So now, if the other end splayed a little bit, then this end might be the end that's going to neck rather than splay out. So it'd be interesting to see how that works. Yeah, so this end you can see actually has just necked a little bit. So this is the other end of that bias. So again, thankfully the way that the tool's shaped it should help us a little bit. And you can see on the end of the tool, it's actually got this sort of sharp edge and this sort of chamfer again. So we can pop it in there and then you can help splay. So you can see now that the stainless steel has actually splayed out over the top of our special tool. I'm just going to tap out any of the dust. I'm going to make sure that you don't get any of these little sort of ends or these wires caught in the collet, otherwise it's not going to make a good seal. Okay, so let's just check that it all looks good. So now I'm going to pop the collet in position. Okay, so now we have our end all the way down, which is fine. We can now pop on our right angle terminal. And again, grease the threads a little bit to stop that binding. And there we have it, so that end's now done as well. Which is lovely, so the last thing is just to do the heat shrink and the stickers. I'm just gonna pop that sort of around here or so. All right, so the heat shrink has done its magic. So you can now see it's nice and clearly labelled. So just do the same thing on the other end. And then, get it about the same as the other side. It's nice and tidy. And there you go again. Well, there we go. A nice, really tidy job and relatively inexpensive as well. So it looks very, very smart. So now we've got our Hoses started, let's get them on the car, along with the shiny new brake parts. And these are 65 newton meters, I believe. So. Uh, 
lovely. And now the handbrake cable. So feed it back through. Now, interestingly, as with many, many modern calipers now, they actually come pre-charged with brake fluid to help with the bleeding process. This is no different. And then I'll do this end first, because it has to be wound in. and then the rest of our shiny new braided brake hoses. Okay, you ready? Yep, got the spanner on it. Okay. Good. Now, while Neil battles with the installation of our brand new braided brake hoses, I thought I'd just get ready for bleeding the brakes once all that's done. Now, normally on most cars, you probably have DOT4 rated brake fluid, which is all fine. But it's all about the boiling point. So Neil has decided to go for DOT5.1 because that's the highest spec brake fluid he can actually get readily available in sort of stores that might be near a place where he breaks down during a rally. Now with the 5.1, that boiling point of the, of the fluid itself is actually slightly higher. And that means, of course, that although this the whole point of brake fluid is non-compressible, when it gets really hot, little gas bubbles form they become compressible then you end up with brake fade so this way hopefully that's going to just push that boundary a little bit further so Neil can get a bit more angry with the brakes for a little bit longer So just pressurise our system and then we can start bleeding the brakes. Right, well, if we've managed to bleed all of the air out of our brand new braided brake hoses, then we should have a nice firm pedal. 
Oh, which we do. And that means we're now safely over the last two yumps in the road that our mini project threw at us. So our rear suspension is now firmly attached to the car, thanks to those lovely little time certs. But also, our brand new John Cooper Works brake setup not only looks better, but it's also going to give this car a load more stopping power. So the next step is to pop the wheels on and then set up the geometry of the car suspension using all of those adjustable parts we fitted. And then we can go for a test drive. But that is a job for another day. Thanks for stopping by the workshop. If you enjoyed the video even just a little bit, then click like. If you hated it, well then click like three times. Also remember to leave your thoughts and your questions in the comments. And obviously we'd love to see you again soon, so please remember to click subscribe if you haven't already, and click the bell for notifications of when the next video is published, or when I have some intriguing news.